good evening everybody i welcome you all from the home studio of ad gali thank you for being with us panelists and uh, viewers on today's edition of discussion on are we approaching pr measurement the right way as you all know measurement is the holy grail of any business more so in public relations uh to navigate us in today's discussion uh we have industry expert mr ashwini singla from astrum uh i would like to request mr ashwini to introduce the panelist and kick start the discussion i didn't thank want to give a big sermon well, well, well thank you bijya very kind of you uh well the panel actually needs really no introduction because they are stalwarts uh in their field and quite renowned in their own uh, respective rights for anybody in the public relations business but nevertheless bharat hindu uh, global head of comms for uh, hero motors uh he's, Hi, uh he's going to represent the in house view and i'm just going i'm not going in any particular order uh, sonia huria uh, from uh, yacom a head of communications at wirecom uh, then we have abhinav rahul uh, head of communications for max life uh, insurance uh, those three people represent the uh, client side because they are leaders in their own rights in their in, as as comms people uh, from the measurement industry uh, we have three uh, leading people uh, leading stalwarts too i'll start with uh, the senior most of them are same suit uh ceo of impact measurement and then i i think uh we have sid who ran icona for a very long period of time at this point of time exploring entrepreneurship opportunities having left icona very recently but obviously as the sidelines as an expert he's also been a pr professional uh in his in his past life so he brings both sides of the world to us and then we have ankur choudhury from concept biu Uh, who's also been in the measurement business for a very long period of time so they present the the measurement view and last but not the least and the rocking star of all of them valerie pinto uh, my dear friend and and uh, long term consultant uh, industry leader now weber uh, weber shandwick right valerie yes that's correct yes the the ceo of uh, uh weber shandwick and i'm still angry with her for stealing nikhil day from uh, gpm he was supposed to come to astro and went to weber shandwick but nevertheless <laughs> uh let's okay even friends we can share right but but welcome uh, to all of them and look uh, today we're going to get a very different perspective on on measurement in public relations as i always say pr is just a word public relations that makes it sound much better So without much ado I'm going to to invite a in-house view to a, a simple question so Bhartendu starting with you what is wrong with public relations measurement today Thank you Ashwini uh, uh thanks for having me around uh to your question let me quickly split it into three baskets uh to begin with before I go to what's wrong in the measurement or say I see a fundamental flaw in the way several organizations not all of them approach corporate communication public relations vis-a-vis -vis advertising marketing as we all know several organizations still have corporate communication pr as part of marcom or advertising now once you do that obviously you are following a extremely flawed policy your measurement goes haywire so that's the first problem i have because all of us understand the role of corporate communication public relation is very different from what advertising is all about the second flaw is an immediate corollary of the first because once you do that then your objectives go haywire now i can't expect a measurement firm to give me absolute full proof measurement of the outputs of my campaign or an initiative if i have not explained to that person what my objectives are of that particular campaign was it brand building was it uh, increase in market share or wh what is it about now that clarity will come to that person when i explain it to them and the third one which i think is a very operational flaw is that i think we follow a policy of one size fits all i'll give you very quickly one example if i am doing a say for example a launch of a motorcycle in say colombia compared to the 
inauguration of a new facility, manufacturing facility in Bangladesh, compared to hosting a marquee golf event in somewhere in Europe. I'm not sure how the same parameters, the same tools can apply in measuring the output of all the three initiatives, all the three events. But that's at a very operational uh, level. But I think broadly, these are the three areas which immediately come to mind where there's a lot to be set right. So you, you say that, look, the way organizations uh, define the scope of public relations or corporate communications, if it is not holistic, then obviously the flaw starts with that because then, then the measurement gets limited to, uh, to how you have defined the role and scope of public relations. Uh, that's one point you made. And the second point you made is each, each activity or each uh, event that you want to do or each initiative that you have has a different uh, uh, sort of outcome. So therefore, the, the objective has to fit the outcome that you desire. Have I captured that essence of what you said right? Broadly, yes, Aswini. Broadly, yes. Just two observations. On the first point, uh, when you say holistic, I understand that in today's time, a lot of people talk about integrating a communication approach. Now, integration does not mean that you don't differentiate at all between what is advertising and what is uh, marketing communication between co and corporate communication. Corporate communication has a far larger role in terms of building your thought leadership, building the absolute reputation management. You don't do that through advertising. That's primarily the role of corporate communication and your comms uh, function within the organization. That's right. one small observation. On the second part, I think, you know, the problem that is faced largely by global companies is that when you have a large setup of facilities, large setup of uh, units operating out of different parts of the world, then your uh, stakeholder groups are very distinct. And most of the time, most of your initiatives are very focused to that particular stakeholder group. That is where my point of uh, the, po the problem that I see in applying the same kind of parameters, the same kind of measurement tools to all your activities across the board. All right. That, well, thanks. That's, that's great coming from somebody who's leading global communication for a consumer brand. Uh, India to the world. I mean, uh, uh, coming to you, you, while you are a consumer, uh, con uh, you're leading a consumer uh, company, but it's unique in the sense you're selling something uh, which, as you rightly put, requires a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. Insurance is bought, uh, insurance is never bought, but it's sold. So there's a, there's a very important role your agent advisors uh, end up playing. How would you see, therefore, uh, the answer to the same question, what is wrong with public relations measurement or where What's not right with it? Uh, thanks, Ashwini. And uh, Bhartindu, uh, thanks for uh, setting the context uh, for this discussion. I see the measurement in three parts. Input, output, and outcome. The problem, the biggest problem is that the PR world is still a lot depending on out not outcomes, which is ultimately what is important for business. Uh, when I say, uh, I, I'm not even counting those who are, are still dealing with uh, in inputs, because that is no measurement at all. Output is, one level, people are still interested in seeing AVE. And some of our own PR colleagues, they try to put a multiple to that also, which mm -hmm. makes it even further worse whether it should be five times, two times, or what the advertising value equivalent is. The second level is you move on to share of voice uh, by the publications, how much space you're getting in publications and you get into share of voice. Again, are two publications very similar? They are different? No one knows. Uh, in fact, they are different. The third level is you create a synthetic index where you take both output uh, in terms of quality and quantity, but we still remain at an output level. Yeah. This is where most of the PR world is. And that's what keeps us away from business because we are living in our own world when we are uh, showcasing our performance. When I'm talking to my CEO or my board, 
they would like to see an impact on the business. And that is the outcome measures we need to work on. We need to look at what the business goals are. In fact, if you look at all of us, what we do is the business outcomes are there and we create our strategy in line with strategic objectives. But when it comes to delivering to the measurement, what have I delivered? Our outcomes are not talking to the outcomes of business. We need to start working towards that. How related the business outcomes and public relation outcomes are. Thanks, Apinav. Uh, so capturing the essence of what you said, you're saying, well, align the matrix is to the outcomes of business. Outputs are there, but outputs are so centric and so unique. So they, therefore, they don't really always talk to the, the impact on business. Then you feel that the, the public relations measurement needs to move more to the outcome level and start to sort of get aligned to business. So thank you. Interesting. Sonia, you, you now run a media, uh, you, you have a media uh, business, right? Which means it's on air 24 seven. And then and, and therefore there's a completely different challenge while, while, while Bhartindu's and, and Abhinav struggle in getting attention. Well, you don't because you're, 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 you're a media outlet by yourself. How is it therefore then public relations is different from you and what is your public relations measurement and how, what is wrong with what the public relations industry is measuring today? Um, thank you, Ashwini. I think uh, my predecessors have kind of actually put out a great view out there and done a great bit of context setting in terms of what's wrong. But specific, uh, you know, in my opinion, I think the focus of our industry has actually, it's especially for media and entertainment, I think it shifted from EVEs to business impact. But the current measurement actually does not, unfortunately, has not got adapted to Outcomes are uh, measuring reach and it's measuring uh, your number of downloads that have happened on our OTT platforms. Agencies that we are supported with, they are still working because we are also still working with that whole piece on uh, AVEs. Where is the change that they are bringing in either? That's not happening. While we are even mapping success matrix for both new age and traditional media, what is missing is the ability to directly correlate a successful PR campaign to the actual business outcome. Do we have measures? Mm. Maybe we can discuss them today. And uh, the processes that we are following are a derivative, mm. right? You know, so in my opinion, we need to find a way to monitor the success or the failure of a particular campaign in a more direct way. We're, we're, uh, Sonia, we're losing your audio for a shot. In, in. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, stop my video maybe. And Yeah, so I was saying that currently the processes that are followed are derivative and hence a more direct approach is needed. Mm. The R is to measure both qualitative and quantitative impact. Mm. That is current. I view really wrong about the way we go about measurement today. And okay. that's what I'd like to sum up with. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an interesting perspective, Sonia. Thank you so much. Well, you've been a consultant and a trusted advisor to companies now for what, close to two decades. Uh, uh, we've made a journey in this public relations business almost together. What has been your experience on measurement and what do you think is wrong with the way public relations measurement uh, happens today? So, Ashwini, I agree with, uh, you know, what uh, BK and, uh, you know, Abhinav and Sonia were saying is that whilst the business has actually moved much ahead in its value of communications, you know, that I remember this time when everyone used to say that we want to sit at the table and we want to, um, you know, uh, PR, uh, PR must add that value and stuff like that. But I think we, the business has gone a long way. Uh, they value what we bring uh, uh, as to the business. But I think somewhere we have still not caught up with how do we then represent what we do in a very contextual uh, business outcome uh, related manner. And uh, what Abhinav was saying about those three aspects of measurement is very valid because if you don't have the right input, which we, we still struggle with, if you look at, you know, from a measurement standpoint, there's 
very little that uh, listening that people really do to to formulate their uh, predictive narratives. Uh, they they're looking at the output, which is your what you've delivered, and there's little that is being done to look at the outcomes, which is from a business standpoint. So I think there's a lot. Uh, in the years that we've done to raise the value for what we deliver to corporates, uh, there's a strong uh, recognition and value for what that what what that brings to the business. Even in today's time when we are dealing with COVID, I think the one big uh, you know uh, seat at the table in the business continuity conversation is how, how are we communicating this? What are we doing with this? Uh, 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 how are we uh, you know leading our uh, a vision of what we what we are going to do for our employees, for our communities, to the government, etc. And PR is really central to everything that we're doing there. Therein comes how are we going to showcase what that value is from a measurement standpoint? Are we listening? Are we um, you know delivering uh, to what we're listening, and and therefore how are we measuring that outcome uh, for business to really see that uh, that value? So I think. There's a lot of change that we're seeing from a measurement standpoint and uh, what we get from most of the measurement companies today is very uh, output driven as what Abhinav has said as well. Okay, so you're, 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 you're making a very interesting point and let me capture the essence of it to say that look, listening is as important as, as measuring because what you listen is therefore uh, at the end of the day contributes to what value you add and therefore it contributes and connected to ultimately what you want to measure whether it's output or outcomes, but the important part is to know from where you want to start. Yeah, very interesting, and I'll, I'll, I'll hold on to that thought. Uh, I'm going to invite a seam to, because a seam represents a measurement business along with, as, as does Ankur. Uh, so a seam, over to you. Uh, same question. You've heard now the client side view, you've heard the consulting side view. You are now so-called the independent arbitrator sometimes, provider of some of the metrics uh, which, which clients value. What is wrong with public relations measurement? Thank you, Ashwini. Um, yes, we get a chance to work with corporates and we get a chance to work with public relations consultants as well. And we've been working with them on measurement programs. Uh, there are three things that I would like to share what we see wrong in public relations measurement today. The first is in most of the campaigns, public relations measurement is always an afterthought. Mm -hmm. So there are times you will be surprised that we get a request from the client after the campaign has been completely executed. And now they come to us and say, can you now help me measure it? Wow. Right. So that's the first mistake that a lot of people make. Now, second, which is related to the first one is because it's an afterthought, the objectives that our clients set at times are not measurable they are not set in a measurable way. And as a result, the measurement campaign will fail if the measurement objectives are not set in a measurable way. And I'm so sorry, there's a phone ringing. I'll just switch it off. I'm so sorry for that. Extremely sorry. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is that a lot of people look at measurement only as a report card of the work that has been done. Whereas nowadays, many clients have started looking at measurement as a source of insights so that I can make improvements to my program going forward. So these three things are, I think, the main uh, reasons why several measurement programs fail in our opinion. Very, very, very succinctly put a scene. Thank you so much. I don't need to paraphrase it because you were so brief and so clear in your in your points. Ankur, uh, before I get to Sid, who will provide a sort of an independent perspective uh, from both the measurement and the client side, I'd like to talk to you about what has been your experience with public relations measurement and what you think is wrong with it. Uh, well, thank you, Ashwini. I think uh, most of the panelists have covered quite a few important and valid points uh, that we feel is uh, an issue today. Uh, but what I would like to do is I would actually like to start up with some good news. Um, India has now been recognized for its measurement cap uh, capabilities, really, you know. Just last night, did we get the good news that uh, we were, BIU was shortlisted as a finalist for AMEC, which is an international measurement and evaluation body's global communication effectiveness awards. So this just kind of goes out and 
puts, a, puts in a point that even the Indian companies do have the capabilities and we are at par with our global peers when it comes to measurements. And uh, honestly, I hope more and more Indian companies will take up this view and going forward, we will be there uh, on a much larger scale at the global level. Going back to the question of what I really feel is uh, my one point to this is I completely agree with what Bhartendu and Abhinav said. The biggest issue with measurement that we feel is that it is still uh, perceived and driven by numbers which corporates achieve, uh, right? So it's an old fashioned data dump that consists of SOV, a number of articles, or AVE, or an opportunity to see factor. But neither of these parameters can independently uh, you know, showcase or uh, the brand's actual performance or the brand's visibility today in the given media landscape. Even if you take print media for that matter, uh, your space capture will never show the quality of publications or your OTS factor will never show the size of the article which actually reflects the real effort put in by any top com or a PR agency in that sense. Uh, most of the clients are open to change. What we've seen is uh, when we really go out, talk to the clients, present our views and lead them with uh, give them with suggestions and on other measurement tools that they can use, they have been responsive to change. Uh, just to give you a quick example, there was an IDES company, it's a uh, global Fortune 50 company, but they've always been stuck with traditional analytics data and the way they would do it. We spent a lot of time with them trying to develop and make them understand what's wrong with the measurement tools that they are using and what is the right way to do it. And as everyone rightly said, it cannot be used as a report card, but you actually need to start using that to plan your uh, PR strategies, plan uh, your way forward, and then use the same numbers to basically go back and audit uh, your PR and uh, planning and strategies. Okay. Fast forward to today, that re uh, report that we actually co-created with them uh, in consultation with them has become a benchmark for them. So that is how they measure it. That goes to their stakeholders. That is how their stakeholders uh, envision and give them their targets and work with them, you know. So it absolutely depends on a measurement agency on how well can you really uh, consult and can, uh, develop a report as per your client's requirements and then take it from there. Thank you, Ankur. I think the critical thing that I'm taking away from what you just said is the fact that uh, if you know the start point and you have that insight to establish the start, then it's easy to know the end and, and, and see the journey that you've made. So well done. Thank you and congratulations to uh, Concept BIU for the MEC Award. Well, uh, uh, it's interesting and, I, I, and maybe at some point of time you and I will have a, a drink over the history of AMEC and Asim will tell you the stories of about AMEC and how AMEC was established in the first place. So it will be interesting to, to, to do that. Sid, coming to you, uh, you've now ran Akona for, uh, for several years. Uh, uh, you were also on the public relations consulting side, therefore you've seen and brought both sides of these things together. Uh, same question to you. What's wrong with public relations measurement? Uh, thanks, Ashwini, um, and thanks, Adjali. Um, I want to illustrate this point just with the help of three slides. And I think the slide, these three slides will essentially reiterate uh, most of the points that all of your panelists have put in so succinctly. Um, I think the uh, I, I want to start by saying that my experience in this industry, both as a measurement provider, as well as uh, somebody who's been on the corporate communication side and the PR firm side, has made me learn one thing, that PR measurement is a zone of those who are brave hearted. And uh, this is, uh, and this is precisely why the number of instances or number of companies who have actually ventured into the area of PR measurement, probably you could count them, you know, uh, on your fingertips. My guess would be that it will not be more than 5% of the overall industry average. And probably you can add another 5% in terms of those corporates who have now st started talking, discussing and exploring. So my guess is that around 90 to 95% of the industry is not doing measurement, but what they're doing is actually PR monitoring. Mm. And uh, basically what the industry is consuming is the quantitative and qualitative analysis of nothing but PR monitoring. Mm. So typically you would see that, you know, typically on the left-hand side, 
share of voice, publication journalist details, geographic zone, key message visibility, spokesperson details, and finally, but not the least, advertising value, which I personally call it as a great thing uh, that we've been following for many decades now. And on the right hand side, specifically for the benefit of the audience who's watching this, uh, this webinar, uh, I've tried to capture certain terms in the form of glossary that normally all of us, whether I'm a PR agency professional, whether I'm a PR corporate communication professional, whosoever I am, typically we end up using. But the point is, I personally believe that this is where the basic problem lies. What we are essentially doing is, we are circling around this tree called PR monitoring, and we are actually calling that as measurement. For me, PR monitoring has a specific boundary. And for me, the PR measurement boundary starts in a different area. So if you go to the PR measurement side, PR measurement side is basically all about outcome. On the PR monitoring side, it's, it's plain and simple. It is all about what, what happened, what is happening. PR measurement is all about what is the benefit or what is the outcome I had on my brand health and on my business health. And which is where on the right hand side, when you look at the glossary of terms, these are typically the terms that one ideally or normally uses. And therefore that brings me to the last slide is where I think, uh, I think when we talk about measurement chakra, this is what I feel is, is or can be an ideal template of a measurement chakra. Mm. And honestly, if you really look at it, all of us would agree that this is typically the way how a human brain functions. We don't need international principles. We don't need the Western world to tell us that look, in a measurement chakra or in a measurement block, you need to have a listing. That's basic, that is default, that is elementary, because the first block on the top left corner listening is actually what is going to set you the goal for the fourth block, which is the conversion part. So listening itself is a huge ocean. Listening can be brand agnostic listening. Listening can be brand specific listening, but listening forms a wonderful input as some of you mentioned, and this is a huge ocean. So this obviously is the first starting point. For some of the industry members I know that listing today is a new catchphrase, it's a new buzzword, but I do know with my little understanding of the world outside public relations, the world or the industry of listing has existed in India and globally for the last three, four decades. You know, machines like Nielsen, Kantar, etc., have existed for many a long time. Yeah. The second block comes is the PR exposure block. And I believe that this is the area which is actually about PR monitoring. And this is where we, we as an industry are stuck. Uh, Asi mentioned it. Many of you mentioned it. All of the, the clients have men mentioned it. But this is where basically we are, you know, catching our tail, you know, circling around PR measurement and dissecting the data in a qualitative way and in a quantitative way. So that's the communication output part. But the real zone when we enter measurement starts with the third and the fourth block, which is when we start measuring the engagement part, when we start measuring the conversion part. Here is where the communication output comes in. Here is where the business output, output come in. And you would see that in each stage, we start with target setting. We start with targeted versus achieved. And that's, that's where the circle continues. So the point I'm trying to make here is again, like I said, I personally believe that the biggest issue is that we are circling around this tree called PR monitoring. And there is a huge difference between PR monitoring and PR measurement. And I think there's a huge need for somebody to take the onus, either the PR measurement service providers or the industry bodies to really educate the industry that look, this all that you're doing so far or all that you've been doing till now, is nothing but PR monitoring. Please feel free to replace the word PR monitoring with something else. But I personally believe that PR monitoring is a separate zone. PR measurement is a separate zone. We should not be con confusing one with the other. You know, I've seen I've seen industry people go go you know go ecstatic when they say that you know I have scored so much of advertising value, so therefore I have achieved measurement. So I mean, we we are actually you know going back many years taking the industry to a negative U-turn, but I think it's a good time now for some industry bodies, PR service providers, PR measurement service providers to come forward and say that, look, let us start differentiating, defining and educating the industry. Thank you, Sid. Uh, very well put. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, in, in many ways you have 
been able to capture the essence of what Val, Bhartu, Indu, and Abhinav and Sonia have uh, articulated very well about how you want to go and align some of the business matrices to the impact you create. Because obviously, at the end of the field, uh, end of the, the thing, you've created a very interesting uh, uh, correlation. I read, I saw, I felt, I did because that's awareness index, uh, desire and action. So therefore, from from capturing the emotion, and I'll come to that. But you've provided a perfect segue to my next question, Bhartindu. So I'm not going to come to you for the next question because you've already answered that question, uh, Sid. Uh, what needs to change, right? Obviously, uh, he's articulated that very nicely to say, look, well, there's monitoring and there's measurement. And in his view, those are two very different things. Are we monitoring more and we're not measuring? What needs, to, what needs to shift? What needs to change for public relations measurement to become relevant? Uh, I'm going to change and mix the order a little bit just to keep keep the, the conversations interesting. Sonia, I'm going to start with you first. Yeah. So, you know, Ashwini, when we spoke yesterday on what we want to bring to this audience that we are going to be talking to, and I gave you an example about how we are listening at Viacom 18 and right. what we are changing here. So I just want to talk you through certain examples that we kind of incorporate. Nice. And, yeah. So we started actually focusing on social listening some time back. And we actually did it only from the point of view that, you know, we were listening socially online and we, we were doing this only to figure out the fake news that was getting out related to one of our films that was in crisis. There was a very interesting case that was there for us, which led us to understand what is the impact of fake news when we were dealing with a film called Padmavati, which was then renamed and called as Padmavati. So we discovered this tool that, you know, okay, if we listen and we monitor, and we figure out where all the fake news is appearing. While that piece got out of the picture, we suddenly realized that, you know, since we were so closely monitoring, we started to listen to what our viewers really wanted. We then discovered that there was a sustained and uh, chatter around one of our shows, which used to air on MTV. And we realized that, wow, you know, people are still talking about a show that back why is it that they keep talking about the show so constantly on social media and uh, it obviously was a cult when it was airing on MTV the show is called KSA Yarya and most fans kept asking for the show to kind of come back on TV in some manner or the other that we could get another season of the show so we took this whole conversation actually to our business teams and we said look there's this chatter that's going on right now do you think you, you'll be interested in bringing season two back? And then they kind of said, yeah, let's see, maybe, maybe not. We, you know, actually our focus has now shifted from scripted drama to non-scripted drama. So we'll be focusing more on non-fiction content. Why don't you actually take this conversation to the Woot team? So we were like, okay, fair enough. I think anyways, that's our aggregated platform. People are watching our content. So the Wood team actually heard us out and they said, uh, well, I think you guys have a point there. Why don't we first by piloting and, you know, predominantly putting this content up in a way in a carousel format and making sure that people are catching it. Let's see what you have to say is actually true or not. Yeah. So they did that and so overwhelming. That led to the business team to really figure out if the next level where they put together the second season of uh, the show. And this, uh, you know, actually helped them uh, with huge success because the show then went on to becoming the third most watched show on OTT platform itself in the year 2008. We've actually seen a direct impact of social listening and measurement leading up to business success. Now, after this, if you ask me, have there been more successes? The answer is yes and no. Because out of the 100 cases that we took to the business teams, we managed to come out with success for two. Now, if you think that that's a win, it's a, in my personal capacity, because business outcomes are not easy to get in, you know? listening in but the fact that somebody is not just giving you a listening ear they are also actually taking action and there is business success to prove on that aspect mm -hmm. uh, yeah. this is what i wanted to share with everyone here 
Well, I think, uh, Sonia, you made a very interesting point adding up to what Siddharth was saying that the, there is a there is a start point and, and what how you structure your start point, what you listen to and, and how you listen can provide you an input to many more ways in which you can add value, which is the same point that Valerie made uh, in her conversation to say, look, if you can, if you can listen well, and you can, you can become a lot more value added to your clients, that itself creates value. So there's an interesting point that you've just bought, which is the value of listening to become valuable to your, your business. Thank you for sharing that live example, because it sort of helps our participants uh, internalize a lot of the work that they are doing. Uh, Bhartendu, coming to you next, and then to Abhinav, uh, same question, uh, as you think about what's, what has been said in the part, part one, what would be your critical insight about what needs to shift in the public relations measurement? And Sid made a very interesting point. Are we monitoring? Are we measuring? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, let me put the things in a bit of a perspective. And, and I'm not sure uh, if I'll be a very unpopular man after saying this. Uh, you know, having spent about a couple of decades uh, first in media and then on the communication side. Uh, a lot of times when we go for panel discussions or similar industry conclaves, a very common topic of discussion which comes up is, is public relations going to replace advertising? And I see a lot of aspirations in many of us in taking up that role, doing away with advertising and claiming that, hey guys, we can do that job for you. That's an absolutely wrong aspiration to have for our fraternity. And as long as we continue to nurture and harbor that aspiration, we will be asked to measure our output by advertising value. So we have to start from that position, from that stand, that communication, public relations is extremely distinct from what advertising does to a brand, to an organization. That is point number one. And Seed is very right that most of the companies are doing that. And it's very surprising to me, that method of measuring your output is medieval, if not ancient. That is point number two. The point number three is, uh, and this is for my friends on the agency side and on the measurement form side. While you were right, that a lot of organizations need to move on, but a lot of us have moved on. And it is about time that PR folks supporting us, guiding us, also have to move on, also have to kind of move on with times, do a lot of upskilling, adopt the new tools of not just public relations, but also measurement. Going forward, we are going to see a lot of dependence on technology, AI, VR, AR, etc. There will be a lot of disruptions. We need to introspect. Are we prepared? to leverage those disruptions? And how are we going to contribute to the overall business objectives of our clients? So basically, I think Aswini, I have again put it into three different baskets uh, very precisely. One, mm. which is a clear message to all of us, what we need to do mm. from the organization side, but also the kind of support and upskilling, upgradation is required thanks, thanks, from the agency. Very nicely put, thank you. I think you made a very interesting point. If we continue to chase advertising, we continue to be measured by what the advertising guys deliver. And if you continue to believe in the value of your own profession, then you need to understand what are you really bringing to the table. And that becomes valuable uh, to clients. Very nicely put. Abhinav, uh, uh, in your view, you made a very interesting point in the first point about business outcome and alignment to the C-suite. What do you think needs to change therefore? in the way we're currently doing. And obviously, Sid has already made the point about measurement versus versus monitoring, right? Yeah, so I agree with uh, what Siddharth said. Uh, but let me take it to slightly different level. Uh, public relations has a much larger canvas than we are generally thinking about. Hmm. Public relations influences almost all stakeholders. It's not just customer, it is the uh, investor, it is uh, policy makers. When we do advocacy, the policy makers are the one and we are also influencing the internal consumer. 
what is read in the newspaper is believed more than what the ceo is saying if there is a controversial issue mm -hmm. because that's seen as a independent voice so we have a very responsible role to play there and when we have such a responsible role to play we should start looking at our measurement also slightly differently uh where are we making impact at one place because we are communications people public relations is a part of communications we are making the brand we are the ones who build the reputation of the brand mm. and when we look at that <clears throat> there are certain marketing measures we can also start tracking ourselves with how are we impacting the brand equity index for example yeah. nielsen does that for brands can there be a way that we start working with nielsen or kantar uh, to look at how the work which we are doing is impacting the brand equity index because the next level from there what they do is they link that brand equity index to the purchase uh, intent and customer loyalty mm -hmm. so that is how we can bring ourselves closer to the business the second thing is just to give you an example of what uh, say max life is doing we are trying to drive protection business life insurance is ultimately about providing life cover about protection against the financial risks how many times as a pr professional i put my neck out and say that let me take up the responsibility not just on the digital world in digital world we have already started doing that what is the impact on the top of the funnel middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel how it is impacted but that campaign thinking that i can do both offline and off uh, online and in a particular market when i reach there with my pr outputs how is it impacting the thinking on protection are people thinking about protection differently mm -hmm. we have to put our neck out on that yeah. and say that i'm ready to measure pre and post i'm ready to measure at the beginning of the year what is my reputation what is the brand association with and how i can then try to drive that very nicely put no you know abhinav i i relate to that because you you touched a very interesting topic of I me mean, and i'm happy to see that uh, something that i started with max new york life 10 years back with uh, yeah. your saves and spend has today grown into a india protection index and you made yes, it an interesting yes. been about yeah. how india is looking at financial assurance in a holistic manner and so congratulations to you i think uh, that's a great example of how public relations can play a much larger role in uh, in capturing the the sentiment of the company uh, i think you make a very interesting point and i want to just elaborate that uh, for the audience here uh, you talked about the role of because I, i see consumer organizations here and you've taken a very interesting point about multi stakeholder impact and multi stakeholder consideration when it comes to corporate reputation right and and you've talked about the role of research and and perception and reputation in 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 that sense centrality to how preference gets created it's a very very interesting idea because to me personally that's my passion simply because that's the founding reason of astrom which is to use science to to actually look at corporate reputation so i'm going to come back to that as we as as we Uh, as we discussed further but you have made a very very interesting point about how we need to think about capturing the mind and the feeling of our audiences out of the work that we do which is a very interesting very very interesting point well coming to you about uh, i mean and you must be now uh, uh, celebrating simply because the point you made about input and value addition is something that seems to be resonating through the Uh, through the through the panel in terms of what needs to change what needs to change in your in your mind to really uh, make input valuable i mean you've got listening you've got you heard the measurement versus monitoring argument you've looked at how we can actually use research what's the difference in the way you want to become more valuable vis-a-vis -vis the measurement of public relations or the, the insight you provide i provide? think i speak uh, on behalf of all the agencies to say that the one thing that needs to change for us is the our the approach our talent or the people within uh, or managing some of these accounts and managing some of these businesses approach measurement as well right it's a, we understand it all of us sitting here 
on the panel clearly get it. But the people who are actually working on various businesses need to change their mindsets, need to learn new skills, as Bardendu spoke about, need to see uh, how to use tools like, uh, like, like Sonia said, like Outbrain or uh, you know, brand watch and, and how do you integrate all of that? How do you use what, what comes up with Cirrus or impact or concept or melt water and pull it all together to be able to create a common dashboard for clients to really um, understand, um, you know, uh, what we're trying to bring to them from a listening standpoint and then therefore measure that, like, like Abhinav said, have the guts to actually say, this is where our starting point is. This is where we, what we've been able to deliver by the end of it. But that comes with only having the right mindset. It comes with having the right talent. It comes with really opening up your mind to say, my job is just not to get some media coverage and then measure it by share of voice. My job is to listen, be uh, out there listening proactively for my client because that listening is really going to impact and influence strategy in a very big way. So um, reorienting our minds as, as, as agents, reorienting how we look at managing clients will actually shape or turn the industry completely. It will force um, uh, measurement companies to give us different data. It will force clients, oh, this is some, something valuable. So we can be a catalyst on, on both sides, but that can happen only if you have the right talent, you have the right people or the mass number of people across uh, the agencies because we recruit so many people who have the right mindset and the uh, approach and the change in, in uh, upskilling your own way at looking at communication. So again, like Abhinav said, it's not just brand. It's not just a campaign. Right now, it's about all your stakeholders, right? That's the value of what we bring to business. So are you listening across stakeholders do you even know what those stakeholders are saying, uh, you know, about that could impact your business or the client that you're working on? I think it's time for all of us in the agency side to really wake up and, and have that holistic view if you have to be relevant in the way, you know, in, in the near future. So nicely said, Val. It's in the consulting world, uh, it's all about how we see and how we look ahead and how we prep our talent to be ready. It's interesting you say that because uh, I remember 1998, I think 1999, uh, see what was that, if you can provide me correctly, 98, 99 is when I founded Impact and 2003 is when we actually uh, spun it off as an independent company uh, out of uh, Genesis and about 99 is when we banned AVE. I'm sure in the participants there are a bunch of people who work with me in, in Genesis. 99 was when we banned AVE. I think uh, we fired a couple of clients who actually asked us to do AVE. So you're right. Uh, I think that the important part is not only to prep talent, but also for leaders in the consulting world to put where the, uh, put their money where their mouth is and, and to be able to take those bold steps with the clients to say, look, there's a better way of doing things. There's a sharper way of doing things. And from my example, I can tell you HP, uh, which was a significant client of our firm at that point of time, used to insist uh, on AVEs. And, and they would beat the team up to say, look, if you don't give me AB, we we're not going to work with you. It took me three months of work with the Asia Pacific team and the India team. And finally, they uh, said your old version of monitoring in terms of media analytics, etc. got accepted in the year 2000, 2001. Uh, I was so there in Genesis uh, when you banned ABs. Yes, Sonia, you were there, right? Uh, I recall that. Correct. That was the right? right? Sorry, yeah, it was, I think it was 98, 99 or correct. 2000. Correct, correct, yeah. when we banned AVE. So there is, I mean, I, I guess this example to, to prove Valerie's point that if consulting world takes a stand and we are able to proactively engage clients and show them better. Look, the problem is not to blame clients or to do anything, but to show them there's a better way to align, to show them new ways of doing things. With, and I'm, I'm, any smart client will accept it. Actually, what we set for India became the standard for Asia Pacific. And those were the reports, I think, that continued for a long period of time, at least till 2010 when I was involved with the... Uh, with, uh, Asim, coming to you since uh, I spoke about my old relationship with Impact. And uh, I know for a fact that you've been very closely involved with AMEC, you've been involved with the Barcelona principles, and that sort of became well, some of the gold standards in, in at least the media analytics part. What do you think needs to go? I said has made some very interesting observations about what we need to measure. Uh, where do you think the world needs to go? And, and as Barcelona principles, 
where do barcelona principles fit in in all this discussion all right so i'll start with uh, what we've learned from amic first uh, but the first one is about amic uh, what has happened is internationally when so many measurement companies got together we worked along with pr consulting firms and what we have done is we've created frameworks wherein we are able to advise people to start talking to their management the same way as other functions within the company are talking to them for example there is something called valid metrics framework which was created at amic and it forces you to think and present your campaign story to the cxo in a way that a marketing or a advertising or a or any other uh, function in the company is presenting it to you marrying it to the marketing funnel moving your stakeholder from awareness to the point of action so that is the first thing that we need to all start doing we need to look at these frameworks and see how we can improve our language the second thing is don't end your campaign with measurement rather start your campaign with measurement and it's going to give you multiple benefits one it is going to give you the right input to set the benchmark so that you are able to set your objectives very well two it will force you to start thinking about allocating budgets to the measurement activity from from the word go and the third thing is which is actually controversial and uh, we but we strongly believe in this we believe output measurement is as important as outcome measurement very good and the reason we say this is because imagine you have a large goal ahead of you what you do is you convert this goal into small small milestones it is very important that you measure all these milestones which is what we do as output measurement because right. if you wait till the end of the year to say i will only do an outcome measurement pro program you would have gone wrong somewhere and you would not even know what what hit you so okay. output measurement is as important never discount the value of output measurement yes outcome measurement is the final goal but output measurement is as important as outcome measurement very well put asim i think that that's very good advice coming from somebody who has been at the apex of international bodies which are involved in measurement and i to paraphrase it you're right see at the end of the day outcome measures uh, impact measures and output measures the three cycles that uh, barcelona principles talk about output impact and and outcomes and and i think in 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 strategy in business strategy consulting also you have lead indicators and you have lag indicators and anubhav uh, abhinav will uh, relate to them what are your lead indicators how do you know you're moving in the direction that your lag will ultimately tell you and you've got to figure out the frequency of those lead indicators the 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 relevance of those lead indicators whether they are output in social media or they are in press or any other format uh, or their brand tracks whether canter nielsen or astrum that we do in the corporate world the idea is that you need to have some form of lead measures and which will tell you whether your lag measures are going to have i got that right and if i may add uh, output measurement measures your execution of the campaign and outcome measurement measures the strategy of your campaign the results that you achieve both are equally important correct i i mean there's a great example right you're going from delhi to bombay the milestones tell you how far and how much distance you've covered but when you get to the destination on time it will tell you whether you made the destination in good shape and in the manner and with the with the budget you wanted to so well right. done thank you ankur coming to you uh, now uh you you heard the various points of view you've talked about the uh, you know the very interesting point you talked about messaging i want you to just expound to the lot of people who are listening to them because they struggle with this every day with their clients and i thought you made a very interesting point if there was an output measure that you needed to take to the client tomorrow what would that kind of measure be uh it basically starts right from the beginning right so when you actually set out uh, with your goals for measurement uh, right before your campaign what are the important factors that you build into the tool they can be uh, then the most important and the most simple factor is basically setting up goals and objectives right mm-hmm. and that again if you look at barcelona principle that also talks about this as a fundamental for any communication yeah. in pr correct so you basically you start with the end in mind is what i'm trying to say yeah But yeah on your campaign activity you basically set measurement goals measurable goals your targets your kpi matrixes and then work towards that i i you made a very interesting point last yesterday about messaging i i want you to talk about that to the audience because that is very relevant to them right so whenever 
was talking about messaging as uh, what I had mentioned was, uh, so I'll actually explain this using an example, right? Uh, so one of our leading uh, FMCG clients in India, you uh, approached us for analytics and uh, they said that, you know, this is what we get and this is how we would like to continue. But again, uh, they also brought in a fact while we were uh, discussing the report with them that we also wanted to map their messaging pillars across how across all their brands and across how they actually measure themselves. That is when we suggested that why not let, make the entire report based only on those messaging pillars because then that clearly defines your objectives. It clearly defines how you are placed amongst your peers. It can very candidly defines what it are audiences are what are your media platforms that you want uh, looking at and you're not just looking at a data dump but you're very focused in your entire approach towards uh, analytics yeah. Yeah. so basically the point i'm trying to make here is that, that the whole idea is not to just post a uh, post numbers onto your clients by giving them an entire data dump but we need to solve their doubt we need to be very clear and understand the meaning of these numbers right like uh, you know give them solutions for every important question what when how where etc that is the whole uh, objective. And yeah. this is not a one-time exercise really. This is something that needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis. It needs to be, take, uh, crisis situations need to be taken into account. COVID uh, right now has changed the dynamics. Though, uh, like Abhinav had mentioned really, that the overall landscape remains the same, that I agree. But a lot of data insights and parameters need to be considered or added on to your overall uh, report structuring to take into account what is happening around the world, right? Thank you, Ankur. Very interestingly put. I'll try to capture what you just said in a very simple way. You want to send a rocket from the Earth to the moon, right? The success of the program is when the rocket lands on the moon. But for the fact that the journey has to be made, there are about a thousand parameters and, and readings that have to be calibrated every second for it to make a very safe landing on the moon. What you are saying is that, look, unless we attend those calibrations and those, those matrices of how the, the, the moon rocket will get to the moon and it makes a safe journey, it will be too late for you to know by the time you land in the moon that the rocket is going to blow. So the value of having those, those matrices between what Asim said and you said to say, look, create a framework, have a milestone, understand what those matrices are important that tell you that you are in good health and your rocket is flying at the right trajectory with the right pace, uh, right? Barthendu, you're, 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 you're smiling about it, so you, I'm sure you're relating to that. Uh, in terms of your lead indicators, it's very important for you to know that. Is that the point that you made? Yes, exactly. I mean, a very much focused approach, a uh, very uh, thought, thought of and a very focused approach towards analytics with clear goals, defined KPIs, and right from the beginning, really, not, as, not, not to use them as a report card, but to actually define your uh, PR activities using that. Outstanding. Well, clarity lead, purpose leads to clarity, clarity leads to good measurement, I think. And when, if you know what you want to do, then you want to do. Sid, uh, some comments now. You, you, you very beautifully articulated the whole framework of the, the chakra that you, that you mentioned. And, and I'm going to un shamelessly steal that from you. Uh, because I think you made a very interesting distinction between monitoring and measurement, but I'm sure you did not discount the value of monitoring, but you were just saying there's a distinction between monitoring and measurement because monitoring is all about knowing what you're doing where measurement is allowing, right? Any, any thoughts now to build on that uh, in lovely presentation, given the fact that you heard all sides of the argument at this point. Yes, uh, thanks, Ashwini. Yes, absolutely. Just to reiterate the point that all of you mentioned, also you mentioned that in no way is my point that uh, I would in, in fact say that uh, monitoring or output uh, analysis is not important. I would just say that output analysis is a subset of the overall ocean call measure, and it is a part and parcel of that. But having said that, as far as what to answer your question, I think I don't want to repeat what most of you have already said. I just wanted to bring in a you know slightly you know big picture perspective. Um, I believe that um, I'm going to talk about two eyes. The first eye stands for intent. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to borrow the example of let's say the industry which is very close to ours, which is the advertising industry, and I'm sure most of you would have been a part of that. I personally believe that the success of the advertising industry is not because of the money's involvement, but it was because of the intent of the stakeholders. The marketeers, the agencies, all of them got together and they said that, look, we have a common purpose, we have a common vision in hand. 
And if I were to connect this with some of the points that Abhinav mentioned, Sonia mentioned, and even Bharatindu started with it, I think we need to have a very clear and a very cohesive participation from all the three stakeholders, which is A, the end users, which are the corporates, second, the PR firms, and third, the, the PR measurement service providers to really understand what should really be the template. Now, having said this, when I say what should really be the template, again, I'm depending on the point that Bharatindu mentioned. We all understand that, yes, if you talk about, let's say, the media entertainment sector, the automobile sector, the BFSI sector, all of them will need certain unique last mile customizations. Mm. But there, are, there ought to be a larger framework in terms of what should the ideal framework of measurement be? What should the ideal framework of PR monitoring be? And here is where I think the intent has to be very clear between PR firms, corporate clients, and the PR measurement service provider. Because if one wheel becomes weak, the entire you know, wagon comes crashing. So my first point is in terms of intent. Second point is I want to bring in is the second eye, which is inclusivity, that apart from the three stakeholders, which are the immediate stakeholders in the core, which is corporate communication or the, or the, or the corporate client, peer firms and the service providers, I think we should also bring in two other uh, corridors into this discussion. Again, a point that Abhinav had, had, had touched upon, that we should try and figure out a way in which we can in start including the reporting lines or the CXOs into this discussion. Yeah. Because I, I strongly believe that the final success, the last mile success of PR measurement versus monitoring will depend on the understanding of what the CXO, the CEO, the board members think of what PR stands for and therefore what PR measurement stands for. And the second category again would be that we should now start bringing in the involvement of the primary research industry, which is in the form of Nielsen, Kanta, uh, you, you mentioned that Astrum has, is doing a lot of work in the research part. So I think we should have a core, uh, a core team and we should also have a peripheral team. So this is my definition of the two eyes, intent and inclusivity. Very nice. Uh, look, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, open the floor to the questions, uh, but I want to summit the, uh, summit the thought for two reasons. One, I have the grayest hair amongst everybody uh, here, perhaps my reflection of my age. But I want to also capture the journey that uh, personally I have gone through uh, around this. I've written a lot on measurement and public relations and the need to capture. Uh, there are three parts to what I want to, to be able to say. Uh, one is there is no there is no one size fits all template that's going to be ever possible simply because there are horses for courses. Consumer campaign measurement is going to be different from a corporate reputation campaign measurement, which may involve policymakers, influencers, uh, and others. So therefore, from, a, uh, from the objective of uh, measurement, uh, it's horses for courses. Uh, what has, so that's one big part. Uh, the second big part is uh, not only do you need to know how you are progressing, but if you don't know your start point of your destination and the end point where you want to go, uh, you won't really know what you want to do. So it's important to have a start point to be very clear where you're starting and to be, no, to be very clear where you want to go. That's the heart of good measurement. And therefore the value of insights that Val talked about, the value of listening that uh, some of you talked about, like Sonia very wonderfully put it, that listening and understanding where the stakeholder ecosystem is in their know, think and feel framework about you, your competitors, the environment will tell you what's the, the outcome or what's the chances of success. And it probably tells you really, uh, in my experience, now we've done over a million interviews of stakeholders and general population. I can tell you, it is pretty much the way you inform your business strategy or your corporate communication strategy rather than trying to do measurement. So there is an importance of, I think, uh, knowing your start point, knowing your end point. And I think Bharti Hindu started that discussion with that to say, look, if you know where you're starting and you know where you want to go, then obviously the objective will be clear and then you know what you want to do. So I think the second important point of, besides being sort of horses for horses is to know, have the investment in the insight to create a start point to know the destination. The third point, 
there will be two kinds of indicators like Asim and Ankur and everybody else talked about. Uh, there will be lead indicators and there will be lag indicators. Uh, lead indicators, as Asim very nicely put in and, and Siddharth talked about in his monitoring sort of that discourse, will tell you the quality of your journey. It will tell you the milestones. Now, whether they go digital, whether they go traditional, depends it depends on the sources of influence and information that your stakeholder group would prefer not everybody will go digital not everybody will go traditional media some people will go conferences and i can tell you uh, from all the number of interviews that we have done talking to policy makers other stakeholders there are married sources of information and influence different audiences use and therefore there is there are different ways in which you for example how do you know the value of participation in three or four major global conferences where you were able to talk to B2B audiences, where you were a keynote speaker or your CEO was a keynote speaker. What's the value of that conference? How do you measure the output of that or the success or the failure of it or its contributing factor to the larger program? On the other extreme would be how would you know the impact of a max, max life brand protection index without consumer research or understanding uh, digital analytics? So the third point is th there is going to be a value of lead indicators. So you need to invest in tools and technologies like Anko talked about in analytics to know whether your journey is progressing well. And then there is the and then, then there are the lag indicators, which are the outcomes that Abhinav so nicely put about to say, look, what does business value from an outcome standpoint? Are we moving in that in that direction? Are we trying to achieve that goal? And there will be different tools to measure whether it's going to be consumer research, and you're right, you said primary research, of course, surveys is a very important instrument to understand and capture the mind. But at the same time, in the consumer space, social media allows you to capture intent, allows you to capture emotion. And therefore, if you start to use combinations of tools, which are both survey driven, which are both analytic driven, I think you can find a framework. And I would like to end with this, uh, uh, summate this with, uh, with one last point, which is to say, look, there is a need for inclusion. You need to be able to bring back analytics in some form. You need to be able to capture intent. So there is going to be a combination of tools, whether it's traditional media analytics to digital analytics, three insights and research through public perception surveys or polls. Unless you're using a combination of these three, you're not going to obviously come to a, any form of sensible measurement of your program because you don't know where you started. So with that, I'm going to sort of invite uh, uh, questions to our panelists. I hope, uh, uh, I think they've made some fantastic points about public relations measurement. Uh, please uh, let me, uh, Bijaya, if you've got a set of questions that I can throw or we want to ask the audience to ask the questions directly. I have the Q&A's here. Sorry. All right. Uh, uh, question. And I'm, I'm going to and I'm going to just read those questions and and any one of you can ask us uh, answer. What is the best and the most effective measurement and analytics approach to internal communication? Bartendu, I'm going to go with you because uh, of your role in the in the corporate, and then I will go to uh, to uh, uh, get the consulting side view from Val. What is the best and the most effective measurement and analytic approach to internal communication? Uh, very quickly, if I have to answer this, thinking on my feet, uh, both online as well as offline, uh, I can give you the example of uh, the system that we have in my organization where uh, there's a lot of intranet based tools which uh, our people are free to utilize and share their views and opinions uh, and i can tell you it's a fantastic highly successful platform um, because it is internal so i'm not getting deeper into it i'm not naming it but it's a highly successful uh, platform which uh, our people are very happy to use and then there is offline and I can give you one quick example. Since the time we went into lockdown, uh, and we locked down, we went into lockdown before uh, it was implemented all over the country. So we uh, halted productions at all our plants and all our offices were shut. So that was about 22nd of March till now. I think 
we must have held about a dozen town halls for our internal colleagues, for our employees addressed by uh, my chairman. Uh, now, in a span of five weeks, and you have uh, these town halls attended by about, on an average, 3,000 to 5,000 people, uh, interactive, where you are exchanging ideas, freely asking your people to voice their views, uh, their opinions. And most of these, very interestingly, uh, is a mix of business as well as personal experience. How you're, and these are attended by not just employees, these are attended by their families, their spouses, even the children, uh, and very participative. We had a Baisakhi celebration on 13th of April, uh, Baisakhi, Bihu, and an extended Easter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had celebrity performers, stand-up comedians, uh, playback singers. Then in one of the other town halls, we had some of our brand ambassadors join us, share their experience of lockdown, this thing. And in the subsequent town halls, when we asked our people to share their opinion, how are the experience all about, etc. That's an immediate feedback. Yeah. That's an immediate measurement. Now, I'm not sure if there is a tool to measure goodwill or happiness. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm sure there must be something somewhere in technology space where they can measure this. But as I said, thinking on my feet to measure your internal uh, outreach, to measure your internal happiness of the people, I think these are the two platforms. One is very one-to-one, -one personal level. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, we have the uh, intranet platform. Thanks, Bhartadu. Uh, well, quick, two, three very quick hits. What have you used? Three, uh, uh, three parts, uh, points uh, when you're talking about employee comms. Uh, there are three parts to it. One is about attraction. Uh, attracting employees, engaging them while they're with you, and then... Uh, retrench i mean like at them when they leave your organization so there are trackers uh, most companies use trackers to actually uh, evaluate listen to why people want to come and work for them why they don't want to come and work for them and then based on those tools actually define their uh, outreach strategy uh, in terms of engagement uh, there are uh, various tools like pk mentioned that people used to build like gamma or facebook network etc and there's, there are trackers that you can set up to actually measure and monitor your satisfaction or build a happiness index as uh, as BK spoke about. And then when people leave, there always is success factors and SAP and all the other tools that, uh, that exist with the HR team to actually monitor and measure how do people feel and how, how why are they leaving and what are they leaving for. And when you culminate all those together, you get like a, a approach which which can be very well, you can, can be very valuable to your HR head to know how to attract or where do, where do you find the talent, where are they from, what are they looking for, you know, are, are our employees happy and how can we do more or what more should we do or what less should we do, etc. And then from, uh, you know, what do we need to do to make ourselves one of the most uh, best love cases to work for. And then the last part is, of course, your awards and recognition, which is your great places to work and you know, some of those expectations which actually give you a sense of measurement for uh, from an overall thanks, standpoint. Thanks, man. And for those who are listening, the best measure of them all is your retention percentage in the company, which is aligned to the business outcome. Because the CEO is going to say, huh, well, all of this we did, did we retain more people than ever? So if people are happy and people uh, to continue to work with you, that would be the best measure of uh, uh, internal communication, amongst other things. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the next question comes from uh, uh, Nikita. Uh, what is in your what in your opinion is holding our industry back from introducing a measurement method that all can adopt and implement? Uh, Asim, you want to have a go at that? Okay. So uh, we believe that there is no no one bullet that is going to take care of every client's requirement. Different companies are in a different stage of maturity when it comes to public relations campaigns or even public relations measurement. So depending on your objectives, depending on your situation, depending on the tools that you have, depending on the budgets that you have, the thing is that the frameworks are there. So you have the same frame 
framework. So you need to pick up one of frameworks. Valid Met Metrics Framework is a very important and favorite fa framework that I tend to use a lot of times. Then there is an integrated measurement evaluation framework. And all of these are available as free tools and free frameworks on the AMEC website. Uh, so on frameworks, I can agree, but yes, uh, same method working for everybody yeah. may not work. Sonia, do you, uh, you, you can hear me? You are on mute. You are on mute yourself, please. Sorry, I'm having a bad day with the internet. No, uh, that's okay. All of us do. Uh, is there is there a silver bullet for measurement? One fit, one size fits all is the question from Nikita. Um, I think we kind of answered that question uh, through the session as well. The answer is no. There's no one size that fits all. Uh, like Ashwin, he actually rightly put it that there are you know different horses for courses. So we got to tailor make our measurement also uh, per uh, corporate reputation or brand reputation, and also for different categories there's going to be a different mesh you'd want to look at also depending on the business outcomes that you're looking at and then marry it and see how you can correlate that to the business outcomes so the answer is a clear no there is no one okay. size uh, Sid, this question is uh, to you from Mayur Jaiswal uh, when you mentioned PR Chakra you spoke of conversion what is conversion in context of public relations uh, thanks Ashwini so um... Uh, so I'm going to use a definition which uh, Ashwini, you had um, uh, defined many, many years ago that um, the word public is basically our target audience stakeholders. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, so when we talk about public relations, um, when we talk about conversion, we're basically talking about the, a converted or a conversion in change of behavior. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about, when we talk about stakeholders, my stakeholder could be the employee, the current employee or the prospective employee. My yeah. stakeholder or my target audience could be my current investor or prospective investor, current customer, prospective customer, and so on and so forth. When I say conversion, I simply mean that we can start by asking a very simple question. Who is my target audience? What is the change in action that I want from him based on this communication campaign that I'm about to start? irrespective of whether it's a corporate communication or whether it's a marketing communication. Mm. So, conver so conversion is simply a change in behavior. It could be as simple as that I, as a consumer, I have been putting up a lot of critical posts on Facebook or Twitter based on a particular experience I've had on a product. Did that behavior stop? Mm. That's a simple definition of let's say conversion. I, as an employee so far, was not looking at applying or approaching X company to, for, for employment. But starting tomorrow or starting now, I have a different opinion about my, this company. And I look at this company as a preferred employer. So, so, so the, the definition of conversion could be a very wide subject, but it can, the start and end of this question could be, who is my target audience? What is the change in behavior? Or what is the converted behavior I'm expecting after I've ended with this communication campaign? I think you've, you've, you've done it very well. Let me paraphrase this. You know, we have something called the net advocacy score, Mayur. Uh, you have four kinds of audiences, advocates, agnostics, skeptics to adversaries. That's just your favorability scale of people who love you to people who hate you. And there, there in the middle are people who are neutral, neutral negative, neutral positive to you, willing to change their opinion. And what you convert from the people they hate you to those who don't love you as much to those who have no opinion about you to those who love you, that's the sliding scale of what we call net advocate. So what Siddharth very succinctly put is, have you converted more advocates of your uh, so-called target audiences through the course of your program would stand to be conversion? Have you shifted their mindset? And that's the game really at the end of the day for all public relations professionals, which is to, to shift the perception of a certain public in favor of you or in preference of you. So measuring that preference is actually about measuring how many advocates you have cre uh, created 
and based on that you can actually see whether your program has been successful or not so i hope we answered that question uh, ankur i'm going to come to you uh, anonymous attendee what are the best measurement techniques for a public relations campaign and then i'm going to get uh, even bhartain to to answer that question abhinav no sorry i'm going to get abhinav to also answer that question and then i'm going to bhartain but this is a very interesting question what are the best measurement techniques for pr pr campaigns so there is no one best measurement uh, technique for a campaign per se uh, because every campaign has a different objective a different set of target uh, audiences it can be a social media campaign and then you have a different set of influencers that you need to look at but if you're talking about a broader specter on uh, what i actually believe and we do is something called as a multimedia engagement uh, matrix uh, to measure a campaign where what we do is it's a it's a multimedia campaign where it's gone out across all mediums though these independent uh, mediums are measured and analyzed independently but there is the campaign or the messaging can be actually measured across all mediums using a common score to actually see how effective your campaign has been how impactful has it been uh, for your influencers really okay interesting abhinav ankur gave a reply on at one level i will uh, give a reply from a, a, a corporate uh, point of view it also depends on, on what stage of journey you are as a corporate and what stage of journey you as an individual as a pr professional in if you have not even reached the stage of fully understanding the output measures uh, well and you have not fully explored that and you jump straight away to outcome measures you are bound to be failed fail and then you won't be able to explain it to the management for whom you are moving to outcome measures because you wanted to see that how you are ma making an impact business yourself where you are have you moved from the input measures to the output measures and then move to the outcome measures and at each level it all depends on the campaign the audience the objective keep in mind what is the audience what your campaign objective is and basis that create your own matrix for that particular campaign yes at the end of the year if you are looking at overall you will have a complete package of that where people like ankur and asim can certainly help you arrive at one common matrix thank you bartendu is is there a is there a, a matrix that can be used to measure public relations campaigns yeah i'll answer that in a in in half a second but before that i was smiling asuni at that time because i thought in a span of uh, 10 minutes you took us all the way from delhi to bombay once and then from <laughs> planet earth to moon and then back so i i am really thinking now that you are missing travel under lockdown <laughs> so well, both the analogies covid world it's a good thing for people to think about that right because both the analogies that you could think of meant travel <laughs> that's why i couldn't register this my yeah, i'm registered on spacex <laughs> okay uh, i think ankur and uh, abhinav has broadly answered that so i will not get into the details uh, i would only possibly repeat uh, uh, what i said earlier is that you know measuring any pr or communication outreach or initiative becomes easier when you lay down the objectives right at the outset uh asim spoke about bringing in measurement before you launch the campaign uh, right. honestly speaking that's a new concept to me we have done that before maybe asim and i can uh, connect offline and discuss that your objectives have to be clear then what tool you are following i would rather leave it to experts like asim seed and ankur but unless i'm making the objectives clear to them you will always find it difficult to measure your call it output or whatever name you want to give that mm -hmm. uh, i will tell you where i struggle and mm -hmm. struggle agent maybe that's a wrong word but where i need scientific uh, measurement tools to measure i mentioned about goodwill how do you measure goodwill now i'll give you one example uh, for any brand it's a massive success if you were 
widely known in markets where you don't even sell. Yeah. Now, that's the story of Brand Hero also in many ways. Uh, since we started our global expansion, we are widely known in markets such as, say, North America, several parts of Europe. We don't even sell there. How am I going to measure that? Now, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm interacting with uh, people who are actually engaged in day-to-day -day work of that, measuring your PR uh, campaign, etc. So we will definitely reach out to that. But I'm saying that when I go out for a campaign, as I mentioned right at the beginning, that I have a certain objective, clearly. It can be brand building in markets where mm -hmm. currently I'm not there today, but going forward, yes, I have plans to launch there, uh, my business operations, my products, etc. And in markets where I already exist, maybe brand building, but at the same time also, it could be something like increasing my market share. Uh, and in some cases where I'm a dominant player, like in the domestic market in India, it could be even contribution towards revenue generation, bringing down costs in some cases. So if my objectives are very clear, then I think we can take the help of experts to measure that. You know, it's interesting you say that, Bhartindu. When I launched uh, PSP, my, my, my former boss and currently uh, the uh, president of Stagwell Group, our in international affiliate, we, uh, we did a perception of Indian companies and Indian brands across the world uh, uh, to understand what it is uh, that we are known for. And you will be surprised to see that we had less than 1% awareness for Indian companies and Indian brands in, in markets like America and Europe. And one of the things that, we, that we, we talked about when we talked about Indian brands going global, and you would be heartened to know that, Successes of companies like Microsoft, Oracle, those who built successful global franchises were people who invested in building their brand in a market before they entered the market. So that there was already a certain level of recognition and, and a certain amount of recall about the company before you. And, and that's why some American companies have been successful in building global brands because they invest in building their brands into market. So something to take heart from, from what you're doing. It's absolutely uh, wonderful. The next question comes from Anoop Sharma. When it comes to PR, it's about creating perception. Value is created through perception, which helps us understand information and ultimately help in driving decision making. Are we measuring perception qualitatively or quantitatively? Sid, you want to answer that? Because then I'll take that over from, uh, from you to, because of my own sort of research background. Sure. So I, I think uh, this can be answered in a very quick way. When we talk about perception, Basically, we are taking, talking about respondents on ground, yeah. and therefore the role, and including so therefore the role of uh, understanding the perception of individual stakeholders with the help of primary research, and including the point Ashwini that you mentioned that even technology enables social media, artificial intelligence, etc. But net net, uh, the the understanding perception, the current perception, the change perception, which is again borrowing what Abhina mentioned, the pre and post. Uh, post the campaign, the pre and post change uh, can be understood well only when we have the participation of primary research and, right. and or studying the online or social media very carefully, very in depth. And also uh, 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 when we talk about perception, one is a perception which is on a, uh, one is a perception which is uh, derived and one is a perception which is uh, which is let's say if I were to use the word in between the lines. So I think the, 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 the art and the science of understanding perception has to be very well defined, uh, has to happen only with the help of inclusion of the primary research industry. And only then we can talk about perception and the change of perception. Good. Thank you. Uh, Anup, the un simple answer is uh, both. Uh, qualitative research will help you answer questions of what. Quantitative research will help you answer how many are in, in, in what. So quantitative, uh, quantitative tools are valid to understand the extent of what you are doing, which means that the sample size has to be st significantly, uh, statistically significant for you to use quantitative methods. Perceptions will tell you the, why, uh, the whys and the what's. They give you the soft figures about what people are feeling, why are they feeling, but how many of those people are feeling in the same manner and, and the reasons thereof will come through only quantitative research. 
you can use uh, social media tools if you can create quantitative uh, if you have large consumer uh, following on your social media tools you can get those but typically my experience is because the engagement rates are hardly become beyond one to one and a half percent you won't really get anything significant except qualitative research from other tools but real research surveys and polls uh, for example when we do election work our sample size can be almost 300,000 to 500,000 uh, for a state election like Andhra Pradesh over two waves we can do so 250 to 300,000 sample size is what we run so you need to understand the, the significance of population to be able to understand whether you want to do qualitative or quantitative. At the same time, if I was to do government uh, decision makers or policy makers perception, I won't do anything quantitative because there's no need for me to do it because few of those relevant people would be representative of the sample that you would do. So it depends on the technique that you want to use, the, the kind of stakeholders you want to talk to. But between using data analytics and survey instruments, you can use both qualitative and quantitative techniques. So I hope to have answered, we've answered your question. Uh, the next question comes from Pratma Tripathi. If we consider the fact that input in terms of PR can have a long-term effect and not an immediate effect, how do we calculate its positive effect on business keeping the timelines in mind? Uh, Sonia, I'm going to ask you to do this because you are in a real-time business, right? Your perception is like being consumed every single day on the content. So if public relation has a long term impact and the business is so short term, how do you how do you really calculate the positive effect of public relations on on the business? I think uh, the easiest and the fastest way to do so is by listening on social, which is what we kind of, you know, monitor and we do that very effectively. I think online reputation management is increasingly becoming uh, a tool that most companies are using and, you know, that those are being used effectively so i would really recommend that you know one would use that as a tool to figure that out and it's really worked for us yeah yeah uh, well you got your answer Patna, because there are instant feedback tools available today and of course the best uh, instant feedback tool is is social media what you put out there you get a thumbs up or you get a thumbs down or very quickly and and it shows a very and and, and i think uh, sonia articulated that example wonderfully that that while listening on to social media they actually brought back a a, a hit show uh, uh, onto a onto their ott platform so look it's not just about and I, I think it's a very important point which everybody here is making, which I want to capture. It's not always about numbers. It's also about how you become valuable to the decision makers. Right, Bhartendu? Right, Abhinav? By what you do and how you demonstrate your work, it's about getting the ear of your CEO. It's about making sure what you're doing is credible in the C-suite, right? Sonia, same example, same, same feeling? Absolutely. I couldn't have, you know, echoed that even better than what you just did. So I yeah. think the focus, the focus of what people should, should think about should be on results. What matters? If we get too locked into matrices, preset grids, preset uh, numbers, as Ankur was also saying, look, think about what you're trying to achieve. Think about what you're trying to do. And then think about what are the results that are going to be relevant to measure that. Correct? And then yeah, whatever is valid to measure, if measure. If we from output to outcome, I think then we would be really, you know, working in the right direction. That's yeah. extremely important. I, th I think you're 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 right. Uh, uh, I'm going to look at choosing a question again. Uh, well, okay, this is going to the client side. Here's a here's a here's a skeptical uh, consultant. I feel some of the clients are not keen on investing on measurement. I think we should educate them so that they get good value to strategize and make the right messages. Uh, before you answer the question, three of you, I, I do want to, I hope through the conversation by now, you have, it has been proven that clients are quite intelligent and quite uh, aware of what needs to be done on measurement. But nevertheless, I'm sure they want to hear it from your, uh, from the horse's mouth. Bhartendu, Sonia, and Abhinav. You have invested in measurement, haven't you? Each one of us has, I mean, you know, and uh, we are in fact even looking us looking at upping uh, the measurement system that is there currently and also making sure that we're all moving in from the cliches of the AVE's world to business outcomes. And right now we do feel that there is a problem in terms of what the agencies are also helping us with because, you know, they are still stuck on the AVE's and the share of voice and, you know, 
Of course, some of them are actually tweaking this to the messaging and the tone and the prominence and the dominance that we can have in, in, in the traditional and new age media. But I still feel that there is a bit of a mismatch. So I'm sure we'll get there. Somewhere we'll get there. I think it also depends from categories to categories as well. And like some of us have rightly articulated, it also flows from the top. Can we make a case there? Can we make them understand? Once we've had a seat at the table, can we make a case there? How do they see it? Yeah. Very nice. I'm going to come back to you, Sonia. Abhinav? So, uh, <clears> the <throat> uh, person who has asked this question might be skeptic of uh, uh, corporates. But I tell you, measurement is more important for us than for anyone else uh, of the three groups uh, who are there. Why? Because our relevance in the organization depends on measurement. And as close as closely we can measure the PR outcomes with the business, our relevance in the organization increases. Mm. And that's why don't think that we are not interested. Uh, we are certainly interested. But at the same time, I believe corporates, agencies who are providing us the service and the measurement companies. They all need to come together and sit and brainstorm and maybe need to find solutions which are customized solutions for each corporate. Mm. We can reach a certain level where we say that this is a minima we should have. But then after that, each corporate will have its own objectives, own demands and basis that the measurement matrix have to be formed. So we Valerie, all need to work together. Thank you. Valerie, do you think your clients are not investing in measurement? Uh, Valerie's on mute. So, Bhartindu, before before I get to Valerie, your view. I wanted you know Valerie. To, I wanted Valerie to answer that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Ashwini, you, no? you did not <laughs> ask a question from Valerie for a long time. She refused to get uh, un unmute. I, you know, I can I can speak on behalf of Sonia because she has been my loving colleague for so many years, and I I think. Uh, I still remember her first day when she started work with me in our Bombay office. Mar mar ke humne measurement sikhaya sabko aur grill kiya hai. So there's no way that she's not going to be invested in measurement. I can assure you whoever asked that question because it, yeah. it is the key, uh, as they say. Look, I've, I've run through all the questions and I want to close this because we are running close to quarter to six now. I'm sure people are people have got their uh, money's worth. Ashwini, just to add to it, even yes, at Max Life also, it's you and Asim who started the measurement uh, at Max Life. You, I'm humbled. I'm, I'm deeply humbled by uh, what you say and said and everybody. Uh, Ankur, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting formally, but I'm glad that we met virtually. Otherwise, everybody on the panel is a dear friend. I want to thank you all for your time. And you are a dear mentor for all of us. I mean, you let's not very... forget, we all started our journeys in some way with you. You are, you are all very, very sweet and you are loved. I love you guys, uh, all of you. But more importantly, you guys have given a tremendous amount of value to each and every participant, shared your personal experiences. And I think this is a conversation which was rooted in reality. It was not at 30,000 feet. It was on the ground about what makes a difference every single day. So those who have taken something from this, I'm sure will be able to get back to office and, 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 and get to work. So thank you very much. And I want to just finish with only one thing. What gets measured gets managed. And what gets managed ultimately becomes successful. So if you don't know what you want, if you, if you know what you want to manage, then you must figure out what you want to measure. And if you measure it right, you'll manage it right. So with that word, uh, thank you so much to every member of the panel. Thank you to thank Adkali, you. Vijaya, uh, Vishwanath, Madhura, uh, Madhura, all of you for organizing this most wonderful platform. Over to you, Vijaya. Okay, so I think people are having some uh, bandwidth problems. So I'll end this. Ah, Vijay, come on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Have a nice evening, all of you. Good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Siddharth. Bye. 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 Bye.